Welcome back to another UND Aerocast episode. My name is Sam Wagner, UND Aerospace Lead Flight Instructor. In today's episode, we will be discussing for the first time multi-engine standardization in UND's Piper Seminal, and more specifically, the configuration demonstration. The objective of the configuration demonstration is to develop the student's knowledge and understanding regarding various configuration changes during one engine and operative flight. It is essential that the multi-engine rated pilot thoroughly understands the consequences of making configuration changes during engine and operative operations. For this UND Aerocast, we will discuss the effect of various configuration changes on aircraft performance. A common misconception made by multi-engine rating applicants is that when one engine fails, half the horsepower is lost, and thus half the performance is lost. This misconception can be fatal. In actuality, most light twins will lose an average of 80% of its excess power. When referencing the power available versus power required curves, it is apparent how much performance will be reduced. Some aircraft manufacturers publish approximate performance penalties for various aircraft configurations. The multi-engine rated pilot must understand that these penalties are determined by an experienced test pilot under specific atmospheric conditions. The penalties are for reference only and should not be expected. When practicing the configuration demonstration, the multi-engine rating applicant is provided the opportunity to gather their own data based on the changing conditions and their own piloting ability and skill. This information, in addition to the penalties approximated by the manufacturer, can assist the applicant when making decisions during critical phases of flight, such as in-flight engine failures. Development of good aeronautical decision-making skills is an emphasis area in every level of pilot training. In regards to aircraft climb performance, the multi-engine rated pilot should understand that there are only three possible outcomes when an airspeed or configuration change is made during one engine operative flight. The aircraft will continue to climb, but at a slower rate. The aircraft will hold level, or the aircraft will begin to descend or drift down. The pilot should select an entry altitude that will allow for the maneuver to be completed no lower than the minimum recovery altitude of 4,000 feet AGL. The pilot should then execute two 90 degree clearing turns with special emphasis given to those areas obstructed by the engine cowlings and wings. It is suggested that a radio call is made to the practice area and or nearest common traffic advisory frequency to advise other aircraft of your position and intentions. After completing the clearing turns, the pilot should reduce power to 15 inches of manifold pressure for maneuver setup. The pilot should use the BC Gump mnemonic to aid an initial aircraft configuration. The boost pumps should be on, cylinder head temps monitored, and warmest running engine noted for execution of the maneuver. Gas, verify both fuel selectors are in the on position. Undercarriage will stand by until execution of the maneuver, and propellers smoothly placed at high RPM. The pilot should zero thrust one engine. It may be advantageous to zero thrust the warmest running engine to prevent any further increase in engine temperature. This decision, though, is at the discretion of the pilot in command. In the Piper Seminole at 88 knots, zero thrusting is accomplished by setting the throttle to achieve an RPM setting of 2180. The pilot should advance the throttle on the operating engine to full power. Care should be taken when advancing the throttle so that directional control is maintained. Additionally, the pilot should establish a zero side slip, since this will provide the best possible performance. As a quick review, a zero side slip condition is obtained by maneuvering the aircraft to a predetermined bank angle and inclinometer position. The Airplane Flying Handbook states that an aircraft in a zero side slip condition will present its smallest profile to the relative wind, and as a result, drag is at its minimum. Referring to the power available versus power required curves, the pilot should remember that the power required curve is a function of the total drag acting upon the aircraft. A reduction in total drag reduces power required for level flight, thus providing greater excess power. The pilot should establish two to three degrees of bank towards the operative engine and one third to one half ball slip into the operative engine. The phrase, raise the dead, is a helpful memory aid for establishing a zero side slip. If the pilot desires to use rudder trim, it should be set at this time. 
The pilot should establish a pitch attitude to maintain VYSE, 88 knots indicated airspeed. It is advisable that the pilot trims for this new attitude to allow for better division of attention and more precise aircraft control. Once the aircraft is established at VYSE, the pilot should take note of the performance. Since performance data is best gathered from the vertical speed indicator, the pilot should be patient to account for instrument lag. Next, the pilot should vary the airspeed to 83 knots indicated airspeed, again properly using trim and dividing attention both outside and inside the cockpit. Once established at 83 knots indicated airspeed, the performance should be noted. It is important that the pilot allows the aircraft to become established at 83 knots prior to noting the performance. This is important due to the possibility of an accelerated climb leading to inaccurate performance penalties. The pilot should then pitch for 93 knots indicated airspeed and note the performance. Varying the aircraft speed will demonstrate to the multi-engine rating applicant the importance of maintaining VYSE in the event of an engine failure. The Airplane Flying Handbook states that bleeding off airspeed in a futile attempt to maintain altitude is almost invariably fatal. Additionally, the applicant should note that the configuration of the aircraft is similar to the aircraft's configuration after completing the engine failure above VR takeoff continued checklist. The decision to continue the takeoff or abort the takeoff is very subjective and should be based upon good, effective pre-flight planning. Furthermore, it is important to remember that atmospheric conditions are continuously changing and good pre-flight planning and told card development are essential to good aeronautical decision making.